Can you see me? Okay, um, hey folks, uh, apologies for having to pull Mailbox Monday episode 32 so quickly. It was absolutely gut-wrenching. Um, I'm still getting used to this. <laughs> Bear in mind I haven't done anything like this for over a year and I'm usually very fastidious and maintain an exceptionally high level of uh, standards but that particular video was not good enough. It had slipped through the net somehow. I was, I'll be honest, I was in a rush to get it up. I wasn't actually going to film one this week um, and I decided I was going to. Um, so it meant working quite quickly to get it done that day and a lot of external factors slowed me down. But um, when I was able to film, I then got it copied across and then I got it edited and uh, at that point I usually go back to the beginning and watch the entire video through myself to just check everything's okay. Except with that particular video, on this particular instance, I didn't do that. I just uploaded it straight away. And it had been live for about half an hour um, before uh, several friends got in touch with me to, like, pretty much at the same time, to tell me that uh, you could actually see uh, an address in that video that was not mine. Well, I don't want anyone to ever be able to see my address, but the Stapley address is fine. That's the reason I have it. Ah, okay, sorry, I'm back. Yeah, as I was saying, um, the very, very kind people that have sent in the video I'm making now, the um, London Underground S stock, their address was plastered on the front of the box. Obviously, I mean, it has to be everything that you send should have a return address just in case. Um, and for like this five or ten second window or something, it was visible. I mean, it was hard to make out. Even if you froze the frame and zoomed right in, it was tough to make out that entire address, but for security reasons, uh, I obviously have to make sure that that is hidden and covered up. So, um, yeah, I have to just pull the video straight away. So, apologies for that. Um, as I say, that, you know, my record isn't 100% anymore. It's 99.999%. But, hey, there we go. I'm only human. So, I acted as quickly as I could. And I can assure you that it will never happen again. Um, it's just one of those things. So, there we go. Um, <laughs> there's not much else to say, really. Um, so, the video has been re-edited, and um, that issue has been solved, and so it is back up. Yeah. It was, honestly, it was just crushing. It really, really, really got to me. Everything, everything else about it was just so spot on, but just that one element ruined the entire thing. It's like having a mint brand new car with a tiny scratch on the door or something. It doesn't matter how small it is, it ruins the whole thing. So, yeah, never mind. But it's all sorted now, so please enjoy. Okay, hey guys, and welcome back to another ice 2 video. Today I am bringing you Mailbox Monday, episode 32. Um, <laughs> there's so much to talk about that I've basically done a really clever thing with this particular episode where I keep everything trimmed right down in order to get through a lot of stuff really, really quickly. Um, okay, the first thing then, about Mailbox Monday and about mail. Okay, this, okay, here, all of this, this is just the envelopes. I mean, seriously, there must be easily over a hundred. So yeah, I've got all of that to get through. Plus, there's loads of parcels that have all been opened and checked. And then, of course, there's quite a lot of stuff still here waiting to go back. We have a Mellard, we have a Class 56, we've got a James, we've got this particular set here, which I'll come on to in a second. 
Um, the first thing to tell you is, please don't send anything else in. Absolutely don't. If you can, if you can help it, it will really, really help me. Because I need to get on top of all of this, get it opened, get it processed, get it sent back. And that will definitely happen quicker if nothing else comes in. So please, don't send anything in until I give the all clear. It's probably going to take me two or three months to get on top of all of this. So I think maybe August is probably, definitely the end of August, beginning of September. I mean, it's probably okay to send stuff in again. Um, which really quickly brings me on to the subject of badges and postcards. Again, no one has had a badge or a postcard for well over a year. But if you are owed one, if you, have, if you have sent something in and you're waiting for a badge and a postcard, my database will not let me down. It will tell me that you are waiting and one will get sent out to you. It's a nice little blue envelope with the uh, IC2 stripe in the corner and inside is a postcard and a badge. Okay, so then that, that very quickly moves me on to the fourth point, which is the database. I'm going to send you. A, I'm going to show you a few screenshots now of this database. So they should be coming up on the screen right about now. Uh, basically, this has taken me months, uh, probably two months, to do. I, I basically spent all of. I spent most of February, all of March, and a tiny bit of April working on this database. This database is incredible. It's online. It's secure. It's dynamic and it literally lists everything that's ever been sent in, who sent it, where it was sent from, and whether a badge and a postcard have been sent back. It even tells me if something needs doing. So I, I was sent um, a, an O-Gage kit probably two years ago by a guy called Harvey. It, this database tells me that that O-Gage kit still needs to be opened, assembled, and videoed even though all of the stuff is here and it's safe and it's waiting to be done. It tells me that there's a lad in Australia who sent a loco in but hasn't had a, a, um, a badge and a postcard sent out yet because it was like one of the very last videos that I did before the whole adoption thing. So it did take a long time to do it um, but it had to be done and it works beautifully. It is fantastic. I cannot praise it enough, it's absolutely incredible. It just took a long time to get it to that level. Before, I was really struggling, I, I really couldn't cope. The, having various online systems that were PHP based and MySQL based, they weren't working. Plus, I had books um, all over the place, but they weren't helping either because they wouldn't tell me if a Josh Jones had already sent something in or not. I would take I would have to spend ages scrolling through pages to find out. It, it just was not efficient. But this system, I can just type in, I can do a search query, type someone's name in, I can type in an item, a loco, a livery, anything, and all the data comes back to me, and it's just, it's just fantastic. I've got here with me um, an example of one of the tags. Um, oh, here we go. There we go. So this is one of the tags that I've developed. So basically, every single thing that gets sent in, whether it's a letter, an envelope, um, a parcel, a loco, a coach, a bracelet, it doesn't matter what it is, everything gets a mail ID, a sender ID, and then an item ID. So for example, the mail ID is unique every time. Every time I open something, that generates a new mail ID. The sender ID, that's unique to whoever has sent it, regardless of what they've sent in, how many times they've sent stuff in, and even if they move address every time, all around the world, their sender ID stays the same, which is really, really useful. And then there's the item ID, which again is unique for every single thing. So uh, a Mallard loco that was sent in has the item ID number 60. It was literally the 60th thing to be tagged. And just for your information, I stopped doing these when that got to 520 or something. So that's how many items I've had to process. There's a lot of stuff. There's a, there's a second reason I'm, I'm showing, showing you this and telling you all this. You're going to be able to look it up yourself. 
it's all going online, sort of, kind of. It's already online, but basically um, the Crewworks website I've been working on for 12 to 18 months, whatever it is, is going to have a special section where you can go along and see all the stuff that's been sent in. So you'll be able to look up your name, you'll be able to find out what your sender ID is, and you'll actually be able to even see a photo of the stuff that you have sent. And that is, I think that's just excellent. So I can't wait till that's online and open for everybody to use. It really shouldn't be long to wait for that now. Okay, so let me just put this, um, oh look, there's another one here actually. Uh, this hasn't actually been, I don't, this hasn't been entered into the proper database yet. Um, so it's got a separate tag. This is a, a tag unique to something that's waiting to go into the actual database. Yes, TID stands for temporary ID. Temporary ID number 19. So this is the 19th thing waiting to be processed. But because it's so big and it's so special and it's so valuable, I thought I'd just get it done now. Okay, so I'm back. Um, I've got a knife. Let's have a look at this. The reason I'm grinning and smiling so much is because I already know what this is. Obviously, I've given it a temporary ID. I had to go through everything in February and March and April so that I knew what had been sent in and who had sent it in because some people really want their stuff back. So I had to just open it all. Sirens and Jet Engines, the new album by ICH2, available to download today. We get it, let's carry on. Okay, so the first thing that I saw when I opened this was this locomotive. Okay, so here it is. And it's an Oxford die cast. I mean, there, has been, there have been so many changes, haven't there, since I um, stopped doing videos for a bit. I'm now back in the loop and so much has changed. Not only are Hattons making their own trains now, but Oxford Rail have brought out loads of new stuff, some of it I've really got to take a look at. And this is one of those things, it is an Oxford Rail Class 415 um, Adams Radial Tank Locomotive, and it's absolutely beautiful. Okay, so here we are. I'll just give you a quick close-up, I've adjusted the zoom, the, um, the zoom, I've adjusted the focus. And you can see, um, well, you can see a lot of reflection because of the packaging. It's locked away in this sort of block of ice that I sort of appropriately named, I think. But um, you get the idea. It's absolutely beautiful. So, I mean, that's impressive in itself. You know, I, I don't know what the value of this is, but it's, it must be a fair bit. It's, I'm, I'm certain it's three figures, and it's absolutely beautiful. I cannot wait to take a look at that. So thank you so much for sending that in. But yeah. You've noticed the size of the box. There must be something else. And, oh boy, there is. There's a wagon. <laughs> there's more, trust me. But no, there is a, there's a beautiful EWS hopper wagon as well in what looks like pretty old style homey packaging. Definitely keen to take a look at that. Okay, this is the biggest clue. Hmm. What's that, you ask? It's a Backman Branch Line London Underground S-Stock Carriage. But it's not alone. There's, there's that one. There's another one. And another one. Oh, and did I mention there's also another one? And there's actually another one. Well, another four. <sighs> wow. You see what I mean? Do you see what I mean? I'm... This has been sat in my railway room for 18 months, 24 months, maybe even two years or something. I, I don't know. I don't know. I know. Oh my gosh. I'm just... Wow. So yeah, I had no idea that this is what they'd sent in. Honestly, I had no idea. I just thought it was like, um, I don't know what I thought it was. I thought somebody had just gone really over the top with packaging. Uh, and it was actually like a, a little loco that needed restoration work or something. 
I had no idea it was this. This is phenomenal. The, uh, there's an envelope, it's stuck right to the front of the box. That's where I should be looking. Oops. Oh, it's fine. It's okay. Okay. So here we go. We return address already covered up. Love it. Absolutely love it. Okay, really quickly then. Dear Will, slash Ice Age 2, sorry I couldn't resist. Oh, I should really get that put on a t-shirt, shouldn't I? Hmm. I've been following your channel for a few years now, and I must say that you're one of the main reasons I got back into the hobby. Um, I had lost interest, but after watching your videos and coming across a Batman Voyage train set from Model Zone, gosh, before they went under, yes, uh, my love for it returned. Keep up the great work you do, inspiring young viewers to keep with you and get into the hobby. It needs more people like you. From going to exhibitions and also running one through my club, the Cradley Heath Model Railway Club, a little shout out there, I see a lot of what we nickname rivet counters. <laughs> Basically they moan about stupid things and in my opinion they ruin the hobby and put young people off. The hobby is the best place thanks to people like you and I wish there were more. Wow. This is coming from an Ashley Dunn and Joe Pearson. And that, that's just amazing. I was only talking about this to, I, I was talking literally about this subject to some friends a bit ago from Australia. Because if the whole family thing I'm trying to do doesn't work out, I have looked at emigrating. I have thought about starting a new life and doing something quite radical somewhere else, like maybe Canada, America, Germany, Spain. I don't know, but I have thought about it. And one of the places I've always fancied is Australia and New Zealand. But I don't think I could move to there because the model railway scene is so different. It's so elitist. Ba yeah, so basically the model railway scene in Australia, it does exist, but it's very, very small and it's very expensive. That's what people tell me. Quite a lot of people do message in and they tell me that they wish they had access to more models and they wish the prices were more reasonable and there's not much I can say or do about that at the moment but it certainly does give food for thought basically yes I, I, I hate the rivet counters as well well I, I don't hate them that's a harsh word yes I'm aware of rivet counters and um, I think people like that I don't know I can't explain it I don't quite know how they work, but um, I just think the hobby is all about fun, you know, it's about running trains, building layouts, designing um, sidings, and just having fun. But there are a group of people that get so obsessed with every tiny detail that they sort of, I think they lose track. <laughs> they lose track of how to have fun, ironically. Um, so I, I totally get where you're coming from, Ashley and Joe, and I can't believe these pair have mentioned that because I literally was just talking about that the other day, that's incredible. On the note of the club, we are holding an exhibition on the 22nd of October. Hmm. I have spoken to them about that. <laughs> Obviously, I wasn't able to make that particular exhibition, but I have spoken to them and I'm going to be there for this autumn, so yeah. I will be at the Cradley Heath Model Railway Club this autumn, or this fall if you're American. And it will be, uh, we will be honoured to have you visit. <sighs> Ashley and Joe, I would be honoured for you to have me, honestly. I, I, I would be very, very grateful if you would let me come and have a look, basically. Please find included a flyer if you wish. To, if you wish. Uh, two complimentary tickets can be supplied for yourself and Craig. It might not be Craig. Craig might be the one that comes with me. It might be one of my mates. It might be Lisa. Um, but I will definitely let you know. Uh, courtesy of our Vice Treasurer Joe. He has been contacted with you recently regarding an item of rolling stock. If you can't make it, don't worry. We understand that you're busy and maybe we'll meet someday at a heritage railway or something. I, Ash, so it's Ash that's done the letter. I volunteer on the Seven Valley in my spare time. No way! You volunteer on the Seven... Oh, wow. That's incredible. What a beautiful railway. Um, as a platform staff um, at Kidminster, or on board as a TTI or travelling ticket inspector. I love it. Now onto the round second question. I remember you mentioned some time, about, some time back that you wanted to take a look at the Backman S stock. I did. 
to save you the expense, I have sent you mine to review. This is the full S8 rake and the two outer motor coaches. I'm in no rush to receive it back, so please take your time and contact myself or Joe when it's best for you. Also, for you to take a look at, from my friend Joe, is the Oxford Radial Adams Tank, which is just over here. She's been running, and in his words, she runs beautifully. <laughs> he is happy for you to do a review on the set, um, um, if you wish to do so, only if you wish to do so. Anyway, all the best and hope you're well. Ashley Dunn and Joe Pearson. Ashley and Joe. <sighs> wow. Guys. I mean, what does what do you all think? What does everybody think? I am just blown away. I had no idea this was sat here for so long. I am massively sorry that it has taken me this long to get right into it and open it up and take a look at it. <sighs> now I have, I'm going to review it. I'm going to get it on the track, see what it's like, um, put it into the database, obviously, put it into my fancy new database, and uh, and then get it sent back to them straight away. So yeah, keep it here, keep watching the channel. We've got this to do. Hey peeps, I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to leave a comment, please give it a like, and if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.